Coming up on Citrus TV News Live at 6, Ace Hood is pulled from Orange Madness. High school students are visiting campus today for one of the first fall receptions. Detectives are still fighting to find Madeline McCain. And the best case scenario for India after they experienced a cyclone. Citrus TV News starts right now. Welcome to Citrus TV News Live at 6 on this Monday, October 14th. I'm Tim Langlois. And I'm Chris Wilner. The interim chancellor started his job at Syracuse today. That's our top story. Today, Eric Spina, SU's vice chancellor and provost, has taken over for Nancy Cantor as interim chancellor. Spina will take over the day-to-day -day operation of the university and help chancellor-elect Kent Severud transition smoothly into the position. Spina plans on helping Severud learn about SU by helping academic departments create reports about different university programs. With Spina taking charge of these tasks, Cantor will be able to focus on bigger issues before Severud takes over on the 13th of January. We were standing outside of Shine and he was, we were almost brainstorming together things that he thinks should be in the student center and was really valuing what I was saying and that was kind of, you know, really nice and really breath of fresh air and a good feeling knowing that the new chancellor that comes in is really invested in not only, you know, the academic parts of Syracuse but the actual experience in Syracuse. So that was my first impression of it. Senator Kristen Gillibrand was set to speak on campus today, but now she's not coming. Who's responsible? The government shutdown that is nearly in its second week. Gillibrand was planning on talking about proposed laws that would give opportunity to more people and modernize the workplace. But all that will have to wait. A new date for the senator's lecture has not yet been rescheduled. Rapper Ace Hood will no longer be performing at Orange Madness. SU Athletics decided to cancel on the artist to ensure the event is family friendly. University Union helped book Hood at the request of SU Athletics earlier this semester. The kickoff to the men's and women's basketball season is this Friday. A new survey has been revealed that most students at Syracuse University are unhappy with their education. 55% of respondents were either neutral or dissatisfied with their professor's ability to get students excited about classes. 62% of students were not pleased with the performance of their teaching assistants. The survey was created by a student-run group with help from university officials. Well, it's Columbus Day and many high schools have off from school, making this the perfect time for a fall reception. High school seniors from all over the visiting campus today to see if SU is the place for them. The event gives high schoolers the opportunity to talk with current students and ask all the questions they have about college life. I love it. I just love it. Everything feels like upbeat. Everyone has positive, positive things to say about it. Syracuse University sends out a lot of emails, but one campus office is sending out fewer this year. Caitlin Richards has more on why the Department of Public Safety has not had alert students as much this semester. Computer networks filled with personal identification information and valuable research make universities like Syracuse a prime target for cyber hackers. We're constantly getting attacked. Chris Crowd helps Syracuse University protect sensitive online information and is taking a lead role in promoting the 10th anniversary of National Cybersecurity Awareness Month this October. Crowd says students often fall victim to a hacking method known as phishing. It's where uh, the bad guys, as I call them, are trying to get information from you by tricking you into doing something. There are roughly 15,000 students at Syracuse University, many of whom use a computer every day, making it a literal gold mine for personal information like credit card numbers or ID numbers. And we're getting pretty good at protecting the hardware, but we have a hard time protecting the software, you know, the people. Students like Daniela Lopez are wary about putting personal info, like a credit card number, online. It's memorized up here. But is that a common trend among the SU student body? Oh, absolutely not. We're in between the ages of 18 and 22, and I don't think it crosses anyone's mind. Syracuse University has an elaborate security system in place, but they can't catch everything. Crowd suggests that students install firewalls or intrusion detection software on their laptops and cell phones, but even more simple measures can be taken. If you just put a pin code on it so when you unlock it, it asks for a pin, then they can't get to that. It's protected. 
Well, we apologize. That was actually a different report by our own Anna Giles about the cyber hacking issue that's going on across campus. We'll have more for you on that story later on in news. Coming up on Citrus TV News, an update on the government shutdown. And seven people have been arrested in connection with the clash between a gang of bikers and an SUV. We'll be right back. It was uh, a typical fall day here in Syracuse today. Light drizzle and temperatures in the 50s lasted for the majority of the day. Find out if the gloomy skies will clear up later this week during your full five-day forecast. Citrus TV News Live at 6. We'll be right back. Small town of Elmira, New York. A boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. So, are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Six stairs takes determination. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Amanda Hart. I'm Rachel Walski. I'm Chris Warwick. And I'm Anna Giles. And this is Citrus TV. Well, Syracuse sends out a lot of emails, but one campus office is sending out fewer this year. Why? Citrus TV's Caitlin Richards has more on the Department of Public Safety and what they're doing to not send out as many emails. Last year, Syracuse University students couldn't go a week, it seemed, without getting an email from the Department of Public Safety about campus crimes. This year, the emails haven't been coming nearly as often. Public safety officials are reluctant to say crime is down so early in the year, but have also noticed the trend. It's a little early to tell, and we are at October, so I'm hopeful, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I, um, our goal is to work towards having good years or, or good semesters, I should say. The email alerts go out when a serious offense happens or when DPS wants students to know about a person who has not been caught yet. They also serve as warnings to remind students how to stay safe while on campus. Uh, the environmental awareness is what we talk about. We talk about making people aware versus making people afraid, um, and which is the other one of the reasons we do send out the alerts is because we want to make people aware. This environmental awareness extends to places off campus where students may travel late at night. Last year by this time, students' emails were inundated with messages letting them know that robberies were happening at places like here in Thornham Park. But this year, they can say there's not many of those messages going around. I think people have shared that, mm, take the extra two or three minutes and we'll go the long way where it's well lit and there are other people versus cutting through the cemetery. Yes. The environmental awareness also includes your surroundings when walking through campus, where Buford says he sees too many students absorbed in their electronics and not paying attention to the traffic around them. If I had to have a message uh, that I could share with students, staff, and faculty is be mindful of your environmental surroundings no matter what. And being aware could mean staying safe throughout the fall semester. Caitlin Richards, Citrus TV News. And Commander Buford said that later on in the semester, he'll have more statistics on the crime rates here at Syracuse University.
And now the latest on the government shutdown. No deal is in sight as the United States closes in on the debt ceiling. The U.S. needs to raise its federal debt limit in the next three days or the Treasury will run short of money. This past weekend showed two parties unwilling to agree. A plan created by a bipartisan group of senators is no longer being considered by Democrats and Republicans. They blocked a measure to extend the debt limit. At least seven people have been arrested in connection with a clash between a gang of bikers and the driver of an SUV. Three men, Robert Sims, Craig Wright, and Reginald Chance, have been indicted for breaking the window of a vehicle, dragging the driver out of the car, and beating him. They are each scheduled to be arraigned on their particular charges on October 30th. Three New York City policemen are also under investigation with the connection of the assault. An elderly man who was lost has now been found. 72-year-old Gene Penaflor lost his way in the wilderness while deer hunting. Penaflor was in the Mendocino National Forest in Northern California. He subsided for nearly three weeks on a diet of lizards, frogs, and squirrels. Penaflor was found by search party on Saturday, and a helicopter carried him to Ukiah Valley Medical Center. He has since been released and is resting at home with his family. It's been six years since a three-year-old English girl named Madeline McCann disappeared while on vacation with her parents in Portugal. But detectives are not giving up on her yet. New computer-generated images show a man wanted by police who was spotted close to the family's resort. He was described by two different witnesses as a man between the ages of 20 and 40 with short brown hair. Police will make a public appeal on the BBC tonight while they will reconstruct the events surrounding the incident. Authorities say that the death toll has risen to 112 people in a stampede outside an Indian temple this past weekend. Pilgrims crossed a bridge over the Sindh River on the way to a Hindu festival when the stampede began. Police say that people panicked when they feared that the bridge would collapse with 25,000 people on it at the time. Indians in the state of Oshida can breathe a sigh of relief at the low death toll after Cyclone Phelan crushed the country's eastern coast today. The state special relief commissioner has confirmed at least 21 deaths so far, nowhere near the 10,000 who died this time a, storm, a strong storm hit India. Residents are happy, with the, are happy with how well the local government is handling the damages. Six Red Cross workers and a Syrian Red Crescent volunteer are missing after gunmen kidnapped the people from their convoy on Sunday. A spokesman for the International Committee of the Red Cross in Damascus says the abduction happened around 11.30 on Sunday morning, local time in northwestern Syria. A Syrian news agency blames terrorists for the attack, referring to those against President Bashar Assad's regime. Secretary of State John Kerry and UN Arab League envoy for Syria are calling for an urgent conference to set a transitional government for Syria. Kerry stresses how important it is to organize the so-called Geneva II, Geneva II conference, but the target date of mid-November set the UN, by the UN. Envoy Lakard Barami is scheduled to meet with several Middle Eastern representatives this week to set a specific date for the meeting. Well, the weather is pretty much dreary outside, and I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Yeah, let's send it over to Rachel Wolski, who has our weather report. We're definitely in the thick of fall. We saw a lot of those fall temperatures today, so let's see what we're going to see for the rest of the week. It's currently lightly raining with a temperature of 57 degrees. Winds are coming from the west at around 3 miles an hour. We saw a high of 65 degrees today around noon, and we're going to see a low of 47 later tonight. Taking a look into tonight, we're going to see partly cloudy skies, so it's going to clear up from what it is right now. Um, so you're, you're probably going to put those rain boots away later tonight, but you might want to bring a jacket because temperatures are going to drop to 47 degrees, which is 10 degrees lower than it is right now. Winds are going to be coming from the south at around 3 miles an hour. Take a look at the current temperature. Syracuse is the lowest in central New York at 58. Uh, Buffalo is a little bit, a little bit higher at 61, so not much of a difference, but Albany is all the way up at 66, so hopefully we can see temperatures like we're seeing in Albany later this week. Now taking a look at the current service map, we see a cold front um, over central New York right now, which is why we're going to see those colder temperatures later tonight, but hopefully uh, once this passes, we're going to see some warmer weather later this week, so hopefully we can look out for that. And taking a look at the precipitation map, we see small bits of, uh, small pockets of precipitation around Syracuse, but for the most part, it's cleared up from what it is, so we're not really going to see uh, too much in the next 24 hours. So it's probably safe to say you can put your rain boots away for the rest of the night. And taking a look at the dew points. 
We see Syracuse is at 55, which is the highest in central New York. It's pretty comfortable, but it's a little bit on the humid side. So um, it's a getting it's a getting to be a little bit uncomfortable. But hopefully, again, within the next 24 hours, it'll dry out a little bit and it'll get back more to a comfortable range. But let's take a look at the rest of the week with our five-day forecast. We see that we're in for a pretty beautiful week other than Wednesday. Partly cloudy skies Tuesday through Saturday, except for Wednesday we see that rain. Uh, temperature, we got a treat tomorrow with a temperature of 72 degrees and 66 on Wednesday, but we're going to see more of those fall temperatures Thursday through Saturday. So Rachel, it's been uh, pretty nice so far this fall. Do you th think it's, we're starting to get into that rainy stretch? Yeah, I don't think we're going to see too much more of the 70 degrees, maybe here and there every once in a while, but I think we're going to be mostly in the, the high 50s, mid 50s, maybe sometimes in the 60s, but we're getting to the cold part of uh, fall, heading into winter. And what comes along with cold is also rain. Unfortunately, we've got that ginormous lake to the north of us. That brings a lot of moisture. When can we expect it just to be more of that fall rain season? Um, I'm, think, I'm thinking within the next few weeks, once those temperatures start to drop into lower temperatures, we're definitely going to see um, more of that rain. But hopefully, it'll stay warm enough that it won't turn into snow just yet. All right. Well, thanks, Rachel. Of course. Find out what may be the secret to solving children's behavioral problems. And find out what you can expect from Apple in 2014. Stay with us. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. I'm Russell Oliver. I'm Maddie Olaskevich. I'm Irfan Yerouzi. And I'm Alex Resnick. And, and this, this is Citrus, Citrus TV, TV News. News. Going to bed at the same time every night helps kids behave better. A new study out of the UK found that children with irregular sleep patterns are more likely to, are more likely to have a hard time being good. Their natural body rhythms are disrupted by the fact that they are always hitting the hay at a different time. Still, the effects of this are not permanent, so parents should be sure to start tucking in their children on schedule. A popular workout supplement actually contains a drug similar to meth. Craze is a, is a pre-workout powder that is marketed as containing only natural ingredients. Labs in the USA and South Korea discovered that the drug in Craze and U.S. scientists warn that it has never been studied in the human body. The chemical in Craze originated as a designer recreational drug. Facebook has signed a deal to acquire Onovo, a mobile analytics company based out of Tel Aviv, Israel. The deal is part of their Internet.org initiative, a plan that would increase Internet access for billions of people worldwide. At this time, no financial details regarding the acquisition have been released. Reports have surfaced that Apple has been building new products for its 2014 launch, namely a high-resolution iPad and a low-cost iMac to counter its recent release and decrease in sales. Rather than increasing the size of the display screens, Apple analyst Ming-Chi Ku says their newest creation will feature sharp, clear retina displays to date. It's been nearly a month since Apple launched a pair of new iPhones, the higher-end 5S and the middle-tier 5C. Despite the 5C's newless and sleek, colorful design, reports that indicate Apple's flagship 5S model has been outselling its less expensive model 2 to 1 and in some cases 3 to 1. Apple has since cut production of the 5C in half. 
Is it a phone? Is it a tablet? No, it's a phablet. Microsoft announced a new update for their Windows Phone 8 that will support bigger high-resolution screens. Mega-sized mega -sized phones offered by other companies have gained some popularity in recent years, so Windows is now set to jump on board. Also ahead for the third largest mobile operating system are more apps and new hardware and improved features. I'm Maddie Oleskevich, and coming up in sports, drama last night at Fenway Park. We'll tell you who saved the day in Beantown and a wrap-up of Syracuse football's first trip to NC State. All that and more when and Citrus TV News Live returns. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Today, about one in five Americans is living with a disability. Over 50 million people, including many of our friends and neighbors, teachers and co-workers, heroes, and leaders. 20 years ago, the Americans with Disabilities Act guaranteed every person the right to live, work, and participate fully in the American experience. We've come a long way since then, and we are committed to making even more progress in the years ahead. Visit disability.gov to see how you can help. The 2-3 Syracuse football team traveled to Raleigh, North Carolina over the weekend to take on the 3-2 North Carolina State Wolfpack. It would be a close one after two quarters going into halftime 7-7, but Syracuse would open it up in the second half. Running backs Jerome Smith and Prince Tyson Gully would combine for 272 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. North Carolina State's starting quarterback Brandon Mitchell was a game game time decision and dressed for the game but never saw the field. Syracuse defense was able to contain NC State's backup quarterback Pete Thomas. Thomas will get injured in the fourth quarter after being sacked three times during one driving fo drive forcing third string quarterback Grand Leadham to try to keep the Wolfpack's chances alive with minutes left in the fourth. Leadham struggled on his only drive during the game as this was a reoccurring theme for the Wolfpack throughout the game. Syracuse would go on to win 24-10, marking the team's first official ACC win. Syracuse women's soccer defeated Miami with an upset victory with a final score of 3-0. The Orange took the lead in the second half with the team's first home victory of the ACC. Syracuse goalkeeper Brittany Engel carried the team, saving back-to-back -back stops against Miami's forward Betsy Middleton. The Orange will travel to Chapel Hill, North Carolina to take on defending national champion North Carolina this Thursday and North Carolina State on Sunday. And Alex Resnick will be talking to us about what happened at Fenway Park. Alex? Thanks, Maddie. Well, baseball season may be in its final few weeks, but this series is heating up quick. The series between the Detroit, the Detroit Tigers and the Boston Red Sox kicked off this past Saturday with the Tigers taking the series lead 1-0, which was also the score of that first game. But let's take a look at Game 2, which was last night at Fenway, a perfect opportunity for the Red Sox to even out the series at home. The Red Sox weren't even on the board until the bottom of the sixth when Pedroia hit a double to get Victorino home. 
Well, tomorrow is game three after David Ortiz hit a grand slam last night to tie it back up in the eighth inning, and the Red Sox were able to win 6-5 to five last night. Let's toss it back to Maddie to see what's going on in sports. The Colts are taking on the San Diego Chargers tonight in Indianapolis at 8.30. This will be a true test of Andrew Luck's ability to lead the team in front of the nation. The Colts will be looking for their fourth straight win. Recent pickup Trent Richardson will also be making his debut at the running back position after the Colts picked him up in week three. The national spotlight game precedes the highly anticipated return of Peyton Manning and the Broncos next Sunday on NBC. So, Matty, uh, NC Syracuse picked up that first road win in the ACC. Surprised they beat NC State on the road? Um, actually, I'm not surprised. I think our team has really been taking it full throttle. Definitely our offense has really been pushing hard, and I think we've been doing really great this season so far. Now, big game tonight, Monday Night Football, the debut of Andrew Luck and my Indianapolis Colts. They're taking out the Chargers, <laughs> though, a little bit of division rivalry. Who do you got winning this one? Well, I definitely think the Colts will take it home. Everything that um, Andrew Luck will be bringing to the team, I think, will be great for the Colts. And everything that we've seen of him playing at Stanford, he's really going to bring it for the Colts. And I think we'll see a great victory for them. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Coming up, a man finds a creative way to propose to his girlfriend. And we'll have your wake-up weather. We'll be right back. I'm Leanne DeRosa. I'm John Tamino. I'm Nick Cardona. And I'm Chris Wilner. And, and this is Citrus TV. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. A man planning on proposing to his girlfriend decided October is the perfect time. Well, Nick, Snow Nick Showman arranged for a group of zombies to help him propose to his girlfriend, Stephanie Hill, at a haunted house in Phoenix, Arizona. The couple was surrounded by zombies on a bridge. A zombie swung by, dropping an arm, on the severed, and on the severed arm was a ring. She said yes, though, and the zombies <laughs> cheered, then, well, chased them out. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of scary. I don't know if I'd like to be proposing. I don't anymore. know either. So, uh, Rachel, uh, what are we wearing tomorrow? Well, I'm thinking we're going we're gonna, to, it's going to be dry out tomorrow, so we're going to have t-shirt, jeans, sneakers, probably going to be good. You might need to throw on a jacket a little bit later in the day. So better than today. Yeah, I mean, a lot better than today, definitely. All right, thanks, Rachel. That, are, that about wraps it up here on Citrus TV News Live at 6. I'm Tim Langlois. Thank you for joining us this evening. And for more Citrus TV content, check out our website. Have a great night, Syracuse. I'm Chris Warner.